Um, so uh, our spiritual practice today, uh, as expressed by uh, Sir John, is refuse to entertain any thought in your mind that you would not wish objectified in your life. Um, so I, I mentioned this, I think, in the last video, and um, it's, it was re in reference to the, to the law of mind action. So this follows from that, the, the way in which we would um, profit from the law of mind action is to use these processes I've been dis discussing so far, some of the more active processes of self-analysis, where we explore our motivations, our characteristic emotions, our judgments, our evaluations, um, to, to see through that sifting process and a sorting process between the helpful and unhelpful uh, objects or, or qualities, uh, the content of our mind, we sort between them, and then we start actually changing and reshaping our external reality. Because our thoughts do become objectified. As it was said, uh, the happy person uh, it has a happy world to some degree. Their happiness perhaps projects happiness even where maybe it's not warranted. Um, so how to go about doing this? Well, Sir John did not invent this approach. It's very much a part of all traditional religious systems. And I, instead of using my own words up front, I'll just give you some suggestions from a number of religious traditions. For instance, from Judaism, there is a practice that's called Heshbon, Heshbon Ha Nafesh. Uh, to translate that, it's the it's called it's known as the accounting of the soul the accounting of the soul. And it's a practice that goes back oh, up to a thousand years to a, a, a popular spiritual movement in Eastern European Judaism, and of course was, all, and was also popular in the 19th century. And the basic practice uh, of Heshbon Hanafesh is to examine oneself daily in light of 13 character qualities such as humility, gratitude, patience, honor, generosity, kindness, strength, tranquility, trust, enthusiasm, order, awareness, and truth. And um, this is from uh, a, a book by Alan Morinus uh, on this practice, this enumeration. And the way you would perform this is that at the beginning of the day, you would remind yourself of a quality that you want to practice that day or that week or that month. And at the end of the day, you reflect in a journal or diary about how well you lived up to this character trait that you selected as the one that you want to cultivate. And this is itself a form of mindfulness. It's a, it's a meditative practice. It's not a sitting under the tree to cl and closing one eye, one's eyes practice. It can be done that way. But it's a, it's a powerful practice, and it really can have transformative results. Maybe not always uh, upfront pleasant, because it can involve real change in our lives. And, and if for, for, for John Templeton, and I would say for any of the serious religious and spiritual figures, a spirituality that doesn't really change you is, is kind of ineffective. It, it's not worthless, but it doesn't have a lot of practical uh, a value. It doesn't have a lot of purchase on our everyday lives. In Buddhism, this idea is central, given the centrality of the notion of karma and the ethical turn that Buddha gave to the doctrine of karma. And in the Dhammapada, which is a beloved Buddhist text, various translations, um, this one from uh, Acharya Bud Buddharakita, uh, Buddha Rakita writes or translates the Dhammapada, let the discerning person guard the mind, so difficult to detect and extremely subtle seizing whatever it desires. And here's the key phrase. A guarded mind brings happiness. A guarded mind brings happiness. Another translation, a tamed mind brings happiness. How? What's the recipe for happiness in our lives? More stuff, more things, more experiences, more sensations. We know that that's not the case. 
perhaps some values are brought by that, comfort, a sense of security perhaps, not to discount it in any way, but enduring happiness, that does seem to be a matter that, occur, that occurs at a much different level of our lives. And in this case, it comes from a guarded mind or a, a mind uh, in which uh, we, uh, we are, we're held accountable to ourselves and our highest ideals on a daily basis. Um, in, the, in, in Hinduism, uh, this process of, is a process of discrimination that's described in the Yoga Sutra and in many other Hindu texts, a careful evaluation of our mental state to try try to separate out those aspects that are not helpful. Uh, I mentioned before, in, in Catholic Christianity, there's the practice of the examine. And uh, so, and instances such as this can be repeated uh, from other traditions as well. So, uh, given that background, uh, how shall we go about practicing this? Well, again, this is where some kind of a journal can be of help. The, uh, the um, the, the, the text, the Jewish text on account, the accounting of the soul suggested the use of a journal. We can certainly do that. Uh, another, uh, another practice that we could do, uh, that we could adopt, would be to find some way to remind ourselves. Let's say in the morning we decide that today I'm going to uh, try to practice generosity. And uh, one guy, I suppose, could tie a string around one's finger, yes? And every time you see the string, you think, oh, I need to be generous. And perhaps in some source I read, and it's a common enough idea, one could use a post-it, if they're still around anywhere. One could put a post-it up on the, on the mirror or at one's office or in the car. Generosity. And to let that be one's focus for the next day or week or month, to really cultivate being a generous person in all circumstances, uh, it, it's, this is a transformative practice. Many of these practices seem so simple when someone talks about them, almost too simple. It's sort of like a kind of, uh, you know, a, a childhood wisdom that we might have derived in, in the minivan as children. If, if you grew up, I, did, I'm, I'm from the, I didn't grow up in the minivan generation, but can imagine driving around a minivan and giving moral instruction to the young, youngsters uh, that are looking to me for guidance. Uh, so it seems a little bit simplistic like that. But if we don't practice it, it doesn't matter if it's simplistic or complex. It's not effective in our experience. So in order to make this practice effective, in order to, uh, in order to change the tenor of our experience, then we need or we can take up the practice suggested by uh, John Templeton to refuse to entertain any thought in your mind that you would not wish objectified in your life. And um, I will, uh, I'll read a couple of lines from, uh, from Sir John on this. Um, and he says, one, one, uh, one suggestion he gives as to make this practice real in your experience is is to mentally stand aside and watch yourself. And I actually have found practices like this to be quite helpful. It's to try to observe myself as a third party might witness me as I go about my activities. What would they think? How would they evaluate what I'm doing? Now, you might say that person is not, that's a biased observer. Then, as I mentioned in an earlier video, we can, we can multiply the observers. We can imagine that we're being observed by a group of people and a, a group of peers or a group of respected elders or a group of respected spiritual figures. And we can imagine what their judgment might be about the quality of, of my actions. So, uh, and, and, if, and if, I can, if I find that I can share in what they're thinking and I share that view, I can begin to alter my behavior. So, um, in the few seconds that are left to us, perhaps what we can do is we can become quiet and still. So many words have been spoken. And in that quietness, in that stillness, we can imagine our ideal selves. And the ideal self, given what Sir John was interested in, is not necessarily our, ourselves as rich or as famous or as, as widely influential, but ourselves as the kind of, uh, as, as if you will, a saint, 
the saintly self, our saintly selves, that, 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 that self we would be if we were the kind of person who could bring about um, the increase of good, of goodness, of peace and peaceableness in our environments, that person. That's the kind of person I'd like to imagine myself as.